Hi, my name is Emmanuel. I am a software engineer, currently based in New York. So I wrote about Dagger some, some time ago, and I wanted to build a POC leveraging Dagger to build a multi-stage CICD pipeline that is triggered through a GitHub action workflow. So with this pipeline, I'm taking my project through uh, the development environment, staging, and production. Um, I'm going to walk you through the what I did um, along and what I learned along the way, basically. So I built my, my um, pipeline using the, G, uh, the JavaScript SDK. And at each stage, I would automate the process of running uh, a linter, a formatter, unit tests, and then creating Docker images for both my front end and my back end. Um, for staging, instead, I, I would be pulling um, my images from my Docker Hub registry and then re-tagging them accordingly. Um, so that's more or less the gist of what I was doing in a nutshell. Um, this is a, more or less the design of how the pipeline looked. So to expand again, in the development stage, I am running my linter, my format, and my unit tests. Upon doing that, I'm then building and publishing my backend in front of image, images to my Dog Hub registry. Um, I'm using the workflow, um, the workflow dispatcher feature on GitHub to pass down variables to, to indicate which environment I'm in at that point in time. So I'm passing down dev from the development environment, and then I'm manually passing down staging once I pass the staging phase to staging. And then at that point, I'm triggering the Dagger engine to carry out a, I guess, to carry out different functions, to kind of like uh, pull my images from my Docker registry and then retag them. And the same thing with uh, with production. So I'm going to walk you through a bit more of what I encountered and what I did along the way. Um, I guess uh, what I what I what I learned after building the pipeline is that you could actually add multiple environments to a container using uh, the width in uh, in env variables. But all, what I did was I was just manually passing down those variables uh, from my GitHub um, action workflow essentially. Um, moving on to the actual steps that I carried out, or issues that I encountered. So to be able to publish my image, I had to authenticate to uh, my Docker Hub registry. I found that you could use the with exec um, command to basically encapsulate your shell commands to log in and publish your image or with registry authenticate, which registry auth method, one of the two. Um, I had an issue personally using both of these um, when I, so I found that when I, when I was uh, logging in locally, I could log in, log in locally and publish my images locally. But when I pushed my code to my repo, for some reason, I encountered an error. I'm going to share the slide with that quickly. It should be here. So I was encountering a GraphQL error that... I guess something went wrong with the, the servicing request. Um, didn't quite understand what was going on. So instead of like, um, so what I did as a workaround was I decoupled, or rather I moved away the logic to uh, log in to my Docker registry, to my GitHub action workflow. So I logged in with my GitHub action workflow. And then upon logging in, I then triggered Dagger to publish my um, image to my Docker registry that resolved the issue for me. It was a big bit of a workaround in some ways. I'm going to expand a bit more about this a little later. A little later. So I'm going to go back to the slide to just keep things sequential. Um, so I already mentioned the whole passing down uh, string variables. And then I realized that you could use the set uh, secret query to basically create a new secret from plain text value that I passed down for my GitHub secrets. Um, then you load the secret to Dagger and you can use this in your pipeline as a variable amounted file. Um, you could use like with secret variable then to return a container with the credentials that pass into the environment, the, the env variable, so the environment variable associated with the credentials. Um, so this is just like a walk through the actual um, GitHub action workflow file that I had. Um, again, just like pretty much sums up what I already mentioned. Uh, um, logging in using the GitHub action workflow, and then I'm triggering Dagger to actually publish or re-tag and republish my um, the, um, Docker images, depending on what stage I'm in, obviously. So another thing that I wanted to like do, so when I'm running my linter, I didn't want to fail the entire build. Um, instead, I wanted to write whatever errors I was encountering into a JSON file. 
Um, because I didn't see the logic of just failing a build because of these linter errors, basically. So one thing I really liked about DAG is that I could gracefully, I figured out a way to gracefully handle the the, the, the errors using like a coding logic, essentially using conditional logic. So if I encounter a particular error, uh, instead of like just failing the entire build, I carry out whatever function I want to carry out. In this case, I was writing my, my the errors I was encountering to JSON and then continuing with the build after that. Um, so I think I already mentioned the building and retagging images. So for the retagging images, I, I chose to use shell commands. I was more comfortable with that um, primarily. And I think one thing to mention is the something I noticed was like a GraphQL, GraphQL request error that seemed to denote that something went wrong in the servicing request. So I realized that you, if you use a, the dog cause method, you get more um, insights regarding where the error actually originates from to help you debug the process a little further. So that was pretty, pretty useful, at least for me, that is. Um, and then another thing that I found pretty useful is being able to handle, like I already mentioned, handling, handling conditional logic, which is very hard to do with YAML scripts. So another thing that um, I wanted to use this for was to, when, I, when I'm running my audit to check for vulnerabilities, uh, again, I wanted to have conditional logic to check whether or not they are critical or a certain number of certain threshold of critical or yeah, critical, critical uh, vulnerabilities essentially. And when that happens, I would then trigger a function to send an email to the responsible party to look through that, which is me in the scenario, right? So uh, moving on to, I think I already mentioned like, um, actually, I think I, I mentioned um, the handling conditional logic. Something else I, I realized that the when you when you encounter an an error with with Dagger especially, it's very it's 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 kind of essential to understand the ex, the exit code because it kind of helps you understand what the error actually like um what it's telling you essentially. Um, so I use that to understand where the error is coming from and then carry out the function to send out send out an email to myself with um the vulnerabilities that were discovered essentially so that's actually a lot the long and short of my presentation uh, i have a video walkthrough where i just walk through the actual build itself i can share that on the discord channel if you'd like um do you have any questions so far or is everyone happy I just want to say I really appreciate the real world examples and it's some of them are painful to watch because you're working around issues in Dagger. <laughs> and so when, it makes me want to send a bunch of messages um, to, um, to try and find solutions. Some of them we're working on, but yeah, it's it's I find it great to see to see like real world usage of Dagger. Yeah, it's super useful. Thank you.